In this lesson we're going to learn how to form our pebbles going clockwise, anti-clockwise in a figure eight. And we'll look at how we can expand them a little bit and make some interesting designs from circles and pebbles. So we're going to come round and do these circles in a figure eight shape. To the top guideline, around to the bottom guideline, you come back to three o'clock. And when you're coming down the words to, downwards to this bottom guideline, you're going anti-clockwise. Hit the top guideline and hit your last circle. Come back round to three o'clock. Now we're going to come clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Clockwise. Anti-clockwise. And you can get quite a good little rhythm going. You can draw them in and just stitch round them, but it's very good practice to do this. we have a row of circles. Now this can be filled in on a half inch round the edge of a motif in a, in a half inch and it comes out and it's quite effective. But if you want a little bit bigger say for sashing I've drawn an inch line guideline here. So we're going to do quite a large circle, exactly the same method. But when we get to nine o'clock, we're going to go round and draw a little one. Come all the way back round to three o'clock. And we are now going to go anti-clockwise. And when you get to six o'clock, draw a circle. Come back out. After three o'clock, come down. And when we get to twelve o'clock, we're drawing a circle. And this one, you want the circle at three o'clock but it is easier to come all the way round back to three o'clock and draw the circle. Anti-clockwise. Six o'clock. Clockwise. Nine o'clock. Clockwise again. Twelve o'clock. Clockwise again. Now 
period block. So you've ended up with a nice motif to come down some sashing. And I think that's rather nice. Another way of in bringing in two circles, we've not got to pebbles yet, these are more circles, mind you, they're not even enough, they might be pebbles. But if you want to come down again with some sashing and you can do a straight line, a little circle, and then take your small circles You learn control and hopefully you will get over the same lines. It's all good practice. But don't worry if you don't. I certainly don't always get them on the line. And if you're using the same thread as your background, you would never see that you've come off line. You can wave your line in between, as I've just done. See, I'm coming round in one way here. So that any waviness will come into the centre. Just another way of doing it. Give us a little more teeth to add into our session. So I've drawn a wavy line here and I want you to do different sizes in this. So again, keep to your figure eights, hit the one before, hit your guide line. Come all the way round, all the way down. And this time the shape doesn't matter. This we're going to call them pebbles. This is all about control. You get used to varying the sizes of your pebbles.
So I have a row of different size pebbles and I'm just going to draw a straight line here because I'm going to fill this in with all different size pebbles so that you can see each time you go round you hit the one before or the guideline and you can vary the sizes and you make a very good filling Align them in between them. And all the time it's the same movement of figure eight. Whether you're doing circles four petals. I have to admit most of my circles are petals regardless. I think the only time I can get them really, really even is if I draw them in. But 90% of the time it's not necessary. Like I say, if your thread is the same colour as your background or blending in, you will never see if you go offline at all. you sometimes get a little shape where it isn't quite you haven't because you're coming away you get this shape here which will come and if it was a circle it would come right here and it would be almost like almost like this sort of a shape you'll get in between the pebbles I'm going to change the colour of the thread and show you what I mean because you can fill them in and make them look even better. So I've gone and put some white thread on and I'm going to show you what I mean about being in between these pebbles. There's a little shape there. So if I bring this up and in between here I would go around it. Now normally you would do this with the same thread. make that shape more rounded. Just little tiny pebbles. You would normally do this as you're travelling between pebbles you would say, oh there's a few there, I'll go back and fill them in while I'm in this area. You will always get them. moving from one shape to the other.
cells and then we've gone in between this and filled in the little odd shapes you're getting in between where we it happens with every one you'll always get this shape that's coming here if I put a pebble underneath this you will get that shape and it's just filling in that gap in between and joining them all together and lastly we have one more which we can use pebbles and use it as a bigger design we can go round and do our one pebble then we want to come round and do another one we're just coming a bit like a teardrop but just coming out a little bit bigger at this time and then when we get to here we're going to go round it I'll do it again and see if I can get this a little bit more clearer a round circle to a point, more like a teardrop and again and a third time and you can in the third time come round it with your pebbles As you can see I continued drawing and drew quite a nice pattern in this negative space. I'm just going to do one last one in here. a nice design as a background fill and then we also have it where it can come along sashing so we have learned to do pebbles and circles and make more designs out of them than we thought at first